Hey Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here. Just a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to visit the new African American History Museum in Washington, D.C. And I had a fun time at the museum because as you know, Dr. Bird loves history. Of course I do, I taught it. So one of the exhibits was the original casket of Emmett Till. The original casket of Emmett Till from 1955. So I had to, in order to get to this room because the family agreed to allow the casket to be on display at this museum only if it enforced the policy that no visitors are to take pictures of the casket. So in order to enforce that rule, they have it in, a, have the casket in a small room and they have a couple people in there watching and, and making sure the line keeps moving and people don't take pictures. So I stood in line for about 40 minutes waiting to get in there in, in this small room to, to see the original casket of Emmett Till. And wow, it was, it was such an experience because because people were so respectful and they, they were taking in the, the history and 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 really they were they were in that moment because there were so many pictures around of that funeral you saw uh, the, the mother crying over the casket and there, there was sad somber music playing in the background and it was such a, a an interesting experience uh, for me to, to to be in that in that room and in in that moment so the murder of Emmett Till it was, a, was a pivotal moment in the civil rights movement in that it really encouraged a lot of people to get involved in the civil rights movement to, to help bring an end to the discrimination and bring an end to the injustice that many African Americans were experiencing in their communities. And it, it also shocked the nation because the nation was able to see what exactly what hate this hatred was doing to people because as you probably already know the the, the mother of Emmett Till she said that she wanted his to him to have an open casket so the world can see what was done to her child so I haven't done a lesson about Emmett Till yet but if you are unsure about this story you haven't heard of it before I've included some links in the description section so you can get up to speed and then this lesson that I'm going to do now will make a little bit more sense because we're not going to talk about Emmett Till. So in this lesson, we're going to fast forward just five years after the death of Emmett Till because there was another case in 1960 that came up that was very similar to the Emmett Till case and that it involved an African-American, a young African-American male in, he, who ended up being drowned under suspicious circumstances and there was trauma to his body as well. So today we're going to talk about the little known case of 12 year old Fred Robinson. On August 5th, 1960, fishermen on Odisto Island in South Carolina would discover the mutilated body of 12 year old Fred Robinson. Now, Fred Robinson had gone missing just two days earlier on August 3rd. Now the body, as I said before, had trauma to it in that it appeared that the eyes were gouged out and there was trauma to the head. It looked like the, the skull was crushed. Now, once again, this is very similar to the case of Emmett Till in that his body, there was a lot of trauma to his body and his body was discovered at the bottom of, of a river. Now his last known activity on August 3rd was that he was hired by another fisherman to help out on his boat. And understandably so, the African-American community, they had doubts about what the police were saying about this death in terms of it being an accidental drowning. For example, the grandmother was curious to know why the police were looking for her grandson before he was reported missing. The other inconsistency is that the white fisherman who hired Fred Robinson, he had hired him many times before. And whenever he hired him, he would make sure to take him back home. But this day was different. He admitted to hiring Fred, but Fred never made it back home as he had done during the previous times when he had been hired by the fisherman. So the fisherman's story is this. He left Fred on the dock and last he saw Fred was fishing and he went to go do something. And when he came back, Fred was gone. But it's interesting to note that the fisherman gave two different stories as to why he left Fred. 
Now there's also reports that Fred was really good at dancing and Fred, he showed off his dancing to, to everybody, including white girls. And it was, it was, he was, it was reported that he was observed showing white girls how to dance and white members of the community, they, they didn't necessarily like the fact that he was talking to white girls and, and showing them how to dance. So at this point, the, the local authorities, they have informed the family that they believe that this is an accidental drowning and the NAACP, they step in because of the, the, the alarming similarities to the Emmett Till case. So they step in and they exhume the body, much like Emmett Till in, in 2005. They exhume the body, they, they examine it, and they determine, they, they locate signs of a concussion and they conclude that Fred Robinson was dead before he entered the water. And remember, at this time in 1960, there are a number of sit-ins and other protests going on around the country, and this case would motivate these people even more to fight hard. So sadly, there would be no new information revealed, and there would be no new witnesses to come forward to tell what actually happened to Fred Robinson on that day. And sadly, this is the case for, there are many, many, many other cases out there that have gone unsolved uh, during this time. Now, the Justice Department actually looked into this case in 2007. And I have a quote for you from the director of the FBI in 2007, and his name should sound familiar because it's been in the news for the past couple years. And his name is Bob Mueller. And he said this to the public when he was talking about reopening this case and taking another look at it. He said, in too many instances, the truth has been hidden for too long. Many individuals have quite literally gotten away with murder. So sadly, the Justice Department would conclude that, that there's no further information to refute the coroner's findings that Fred Robinson died of an accidental drowning. And so we're left where, exactly where we were back in 1960 in regards to the death of Fred Robinson. So that's a story. So that's a sad story of Fred Robinson. And sadly, there are many cases, unsolved cases like his story, but I wanted to do a lesson on that one because of the similarities to the Emmett Till case. Just five years after Emmett Till, we have Fred Robinson. So I thought I was curious to, to learn more and so I, I present that to you. There's a worksheet available for download that goes along with this lesson. Just look in the description section for more details on how to download that worksheet. I thank you, I appreciate you. Thanks again for, for watching, and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.